113 Questions About Evolution with John Perry. Evolutionary question number 12. Will animals adapt to climate change? Scientists are telling us right now that they suspect that in the future, as the climate continues to change, some species will go extinct, others will adapt, and still others will actually thrive. They're going to do better in the new environments. If nothing else changes except for the climate, these things will happen. Of course, lots of things are, ha are changing. Humans are building larger and larger cities, and we're you know, inventing new pesticides and so on. So there's lots of things that can change the predictions that scientists have. But the reason that scientists believe that some organisms will go extinct while others will thrive is because they've been watching climate change now for 25 years, and we've been monitoring wildlife populations, and we have seen some organisms die off. Some species go extinct. We've seen some adapt. They've actually evolved in some cases uh, at, at, the, at the level of their genes. And we have seen others uh, thrive. So to try and help understand what types of organisms we expect to go extinct and what types we expect to thrive, first we need to understand how it is that animals have been adapting over these past 25 years. And when you understand that, this will all make sense. These are the three ways in which organisms are adapting. First is migration. Second is behavioral changes and gene expression shifts. And then third is actual genetic evolution. So what about this migration? What's happening with migration? In 2011, a group of scientists poured through the scientific literature to find all the data that we had on animal migrations, where it is that different animal and plant populations existed over time. A lot of the data sets they had stretched back at least 25 years, so we had quite a bit of information about where different plants and animals lived, and that was kept track of sometimes on a yearly basis, sometimes decade basis, and so on. What these scientists found is that on average, ecosystems in mountain ranges are climbing about 36 feet, that's 11 meters, per decade, and in flat areas, ecosystems on land are shifting about 10.5 miles from the equator. So north of the equator, things are moving further north, and south of the equator, things are moving further south. And it appears that these ecosystems are doing this, these organisms are doing this, because they're trying to follow good climate. Their bodies are adapted to specific climate circumstances, and when the climate starts to change, they get uncomfortable and they move. Now, you might be wondering, how does a plant migrate? Plants and animals are migrating? What the heck's going on there? Well, plants obviously can't like get up and, and walk. They can't just leave an area. But from generation to generation, plants do migrate because their seeds disperse. The seeds that happen to disperse into better climates for them, those individuals will do better. And that's how we get plants migrating over time. So they can, they can climb mountains like this. They can move all across the, the map, just from generation to generation through seed dispersal. And a lot of these seeds, of course, are dispersed by animals. They eat fruits and then poop them out in different places. That's actually why plants evolve the ability to create sweet-tasting shells around their seeds, these things that we call fruits. Most types of fruit are actually the ovary of the plant, and plants that had ovaries that happened to taste good were having their seeds dispersed further, and the further their seeds were dispersed, natural selection was selecting in favor of that in many cases, and so you have the evolution of fruit. That's, that's how this whole crazy thing got started. Plants can migrate, animals are migrating. On average, that's about 10 miles per decade, so about, about a mile per year from the equator. Now, if you stop and think about this for a second, you realize that there is a problem, and that is that organisms that live on the tops of mountains, like the beautiful cloud forests of Ecuador, they're screwed because organisms from lower altitudes are now rising up and it's, it's battle time. It's, they need to fight to keep their territory. Obviously, if you live on an island, <laughs> uh, you can't really migrate very far, unless you happen to be a bird or something with wings, or you can, you're good at swimming, you're kind of stuck on that island, and that's actually where we're seeing the most extinctions, is on islands. The first mammal that we've seen that definitely went extinct because of climate change was an island species of rat. I don't know how much you care about rats, but <laughs> it was a, a very unique species of rat, and it's now gone. And then, of course, in the Arctic, so the far north and the far south, 
you have organisms that are just having their homes invaded. This is a really interesting photo of a fox, a red fox that has just killed an arctic fox. Arctic fox are a little bit smaller. They, they tend not to do well when they come in into battle with red foxes. And this guy just, just won the war. That's a really cool photo. That's by Don Gutowski. So the main way that organisms are adapting to climate change is they are moving. And moving, of course, causes stress pretty much on everybody. <laughs> Migration's never easy. You enter a new area and there's always going to be someone there already that you have to fight. Uh, it puts stress on a species. And then if you add that to other stresses that we're putting on species with, you know, the expansion of cities and agriculture and so on, there's a lot of things that are playing against species right now, aside from climate change. And if you add that all together, it becomes really difficult for some species to adapt to this, especially if they have small populations that don't have a lot of genetic diversity. They're probably not going to make it. So ecosystems that are already on the tops of mountains, they're in a lot of trouble. Ecosystems on islands, where the organisms in those ecosystems can't migrate because the ocean's blocking them, they're in a lot of trouble. Ecosystems in the far north and in the far south, which are now being invaded by intruders, they're in a lot of trouble. So these are the types of organisms that pretty screwed from climate change. The second way that organisms are adjusting is through behavioral changes and gene expression shifts. The Kino checker spot butterfly is a species that traditionally lived in Mexico and Southern California. It lived below Los Angeles, but climate change has been causing it to migrate north. Right now it's butting up against LA and it's having troubles because it can't really get through the city, right? This, this giant city that goes from the coast all the way to the mountain range and this butterfly needs to pass, but it can't because there's a giant city there. Now, a lot of uh, the scientists that are studying this butterfly, they're like, whoa, this is a problem. I think that we need to actually start capturing them and moving them ourselves northwest of LA so, so that they can continue their migration northward as the climate continues to shift. But we have found that this is not necessary. And this has been a huge surprise to everybody that's been studying this. This species is taking care of itself. <laughs> it's picking itself up by the bootstraps. Apparently it's a libertarian butterfly species. The butterflies are coping in several different ways. First, they're moving further and further up into the mountains. We thought that they would have problems with this because butterflies often do. If you, if you raise the altitude, they don't do well. But they seem to be doing just fine in this case. Second, they've adopted a new flower as a host for them to lay their eggs on. And that might not seem like a huge deal if you are not an entomologist. But butterflies are very sensitive uh, to diet. And wherever they lay their eggs, the, the caterpillars will hatch. The larva will hatch from those eggs and start eating the plant that, that they were laid on. And most butterflies are very, very specific. They only have one host plant that they, their digestive system is adapted to use, and they specialize on that. And the same is true with this butterfly. It was specializing on one plant, and it's now shifted to a new plant. And this happened way faster than we thought it would. So far as we can tell, it happened without any mutation, without any shifts in allele frequency within the population. It seems as though they're just turning on different genes and shutting off other genes in order to cope with this new food product. This is called phenotypic plasticity. It's just a shift in gene expression without modifying the actual DNA. It's not true evolution. It's just phenotypic plasticity. And then last but not least, we have actual evolution. Because phenotypic plasticity is a real thing and it's very powerful, Whenever we see organisms change in response to their environment, it's hard to tell for sure if they're actually evolving or if this was just an ability that they already had. In order to know if something's actually evolving, we usually have to do long-term genetic studies. In 2014, a special issue of the journal Evolutionary Applications found over 20 cases of bona fide evolution with a strong link to climate change. This is actual evolution at the level of genes and allele frequencies. This is not simple phenotypic plasticity. Among the species that these scientists have found evolving are the Alaskan pink salmon, which have changed their migration and their spawning times, and this is caused by a change in their genetics. European snails that have evolved to change the color of their shells to help them keep cool in hotter weather. And then tawny owls, which are changing their feather colors to better camouflage in their new browner environments. 
in summary, will animals adapt to climate change? Yeah, some of them will. They already have been. We've witnessed this happening over the past 25 years. And some of them, of course, sadly will not. Those that live on islands, tops of mountains, the far north, the far south, they're going to have extra troubles as the climate continues to change. I know that that's pretty sad, but here is a video of some baby raccoons at Chintimini Wildlife Center. They were orphaned, sadly, but the Wildlife Center took care of them, and they were released back into the wild. So that's cool. By the way, thank you for bearing with me as I have a horrible cold today, but I made a film anyways. Oh my gosh, they're so stinking cute. They've got little little human hands, sort of. Sort of. Their fingers almost feel like gel. They have extremely sensitive fingers. They'll actually uh, they'll explore things more with their hands than with their eyes. It's almost like they see with their hands. They're really cool animals. By the way, they make horrible pets. <laughs> They're adorable when they're babies, but as soon as they go through puberty, they, they just turn into nasty little beasts. These things belong in the woods. Next question. 